today on Fixing the Money Thing. Faith is the picture on the inside matching the picture of what's in heaven, righteousness. When that picture lines up and you're persuaded, fully confident, bam, faith is there. It's a now revolution today on Fixing the Money Thing. With most families burdened in unsustainable levels of personal debt, most Americans believe there is no way to have financial freedom. However, author, pastor, and financial expert Gary Cassie believes most families can be completely out of debt in less than seven years. You must get out of debt. You've got to make right choices with your money right now. Gary and his wife Drenda are now on a crusade to share this information that changed their life so that you can not just survive, but prosper in today's economy. Your life can be totally transformed by an idea in the marketplace. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Did you know a lot of people are living under a curse? And maybe today you feel like you're living under a curse where you just feel like you're running, but you're never getting ahead. You're always behind, always running behind financially uh, in your bills each month. You know, on today's program, we're going to be talking how you can escape from the curse. You know, Drew, you're talking about what Jesus said in Matthew 6, that the unbeliever, someone without a covenant, mm -hmm. has to run after the things of life. That's the only way to get them. That goes back to Genesis chapter 3, when Adam gave it all away, gave all the provision away, and he was now destined, as the Bible says, to acquire everything he needed with painful toil and sweat. Yeah, just to be a survivalist. Just a survivalist. Fear entered the world. He became, world, he became a, a professional survivalist. There is an escape. There is a way out. Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no, no sorrow, sorrow with it. That's and right. that is what we're talking about in this conference. That's right. You know, we're gonna go to a conference that we recently did. You're gonna love it. It's gonna help you. And later in the program, we're gonna tell you how you can get the series. A poverty mindset looks outside of ourselves for, for answers. It's a handout mentality. You know, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? And when we're born again, without knowing it, we simply transfer that attitude to God. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? But in essence, the kingdoms we're at in us, and we have been made more than an overcomer. We have. So for our lives to change, we can't always be like this. Nothing's going to change. We have to realize that we're the ones that have to engage that we have the answers, that we, we are the world's answer, that we are the solution, that we create wealth, we don't find it. Listen to me, we create wealth, we don't look for it. You know, the Bible says in um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 that you're the lender, not the borrower, right? You know, and you've heard people quote that. We're, we're called to be the lender, not the borrower. But you know why we're the lender, not the borrower? Because we're the head, not the tail. See, people reverse it. They think we become the head and not the tail when we have the money to lend and not borrow. It's reversed. We're the, we have the money to lend because we're the head and not the tail because who has the ideas? The head. Who creates? The head. So I, I told you that the first night the answer was the kingdom. Remember Luke 6? 20, blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom. The kingdom's where at? In you. But how do most Christians think the kingdom operates? It's out there somewhere. God. God is going to do it. Yeah, that's right. But he needs a man or a woman to release the kingdom in the earth realm. All right. So yeah, God is going to do it. But he has to have someone do it with him. But most people, I call it mailbox mentality. They're waiting for God to show up. They're waiting for a million. They're waiting to walk down the, here's how they think. Here's how Christians have been taught. Give and it's all done. You know, it's like, like a magic wand. It is all finished, but we have to know our part and how to walk it out. So giving is vital, but it's like sowing a seed. A farmer, if he sows a seed and just says, get the lemonade, get the lemonade out. We've won. It's done. He's not going to have a harvest, is he? If he doesn't know harvest season, how to discern the times, when to go out and harvest, how the product works, how the harvest works, how to cultivate, know the enemies of the field. If he doesn't understand the whole process of harvest, he's not going to have harvest. Although he's, he spent good money on the, on the seed and he had full confidence in the laws of nature, he's not going to have a harvest. The same thing applies in the kingdom. Because the kingdom operates by law. Remember? By law. So it works for who? Anyone. That includes you. We talked about Potiphar last night. Remember Potiphar, Joseph had covenant. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, he had covenant. 
meaning that legality. God had legally a door into the earth realm through Abraham to supersede the earth curse system. Like a plane flying over gravity, the law of gravity is still here. But a plane uses another law to supersede the law of gravity, right? Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that the law of the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. Although the law of sin and death is still functioning here. As I walk in the spirit, the Bible says, I'll not carry out the deeds of the flesh. I can walk above this earth curse system with victory. We have to know how to do that. We need to learn that. So Potiphar didn't understand these things. He simply put his stuff under Joseph's care. He was impressed by his integrity and the success he saw in his life. He put his stuff under Joseph's care and the Bible says his whole estate prospered. The blessing of the Lord came on Potiphar who was an Egyptian. And I said, you know, Potiphar did it, so can we, so can anyone. So God didn't choose to bless Potiphar's stuff, did he? God didn't, did he? Who did? Potiphar did. But Potiphar did it by accident. We as believers should not, we, know, we should know how this stuff works. But there's a, there's a scripture there, Genesis 39, verse number five. It says, so when Joseph took over Potiphar's affairs, with Joseph in charge, Potiphar did not worry about anything but the food he ate. That meant he was free to be about his assignment and purpose free from worry to be about assignment. And I said last night, that's a picture of the Sabbath rest. I said, you can never discover your destiny until you find out and how to fix the money thing. Jesus said in Matthew 6, we read last night that it's impossible, you cannot serve two masters. Oh, you may like to, you may like to sing and dance on Sunday morning, but when it comes time to making decisions, you will serve the master who you believe will meet your needs. That's just how it is. And so Jesus is always comparing kingdoms. And we found out that uh, you know, when Jesus fed the 5,000, how he brought that situation under the dominion of the kingdom. Remember, he took the bread and blessed it. Remember last night when he blessed it and gave it back to them, what happened to the bread? Changed governments. When Peter, James, and John had a fishing business, he borrowed the boats. What happened to the boats? The business changed kingdoms. He came back in. God then put a word of knowledge into the earth. Jesus spoke a word of knowledge in the deep water. You'll catch the fish and the boat's about sank. Now, how many like to operate? Remember, they fished all night and caught how much? Nothing. Nothing. They labored in the natural. All right. But with God, with revelation knowledge, their whole business changed. Now, there's a glimpse of how the kingdom operates right there. With more revolutionary ideas to get out of debt, Gary and Drenda Cassie. Wow, this teaching is so awesome. You really, you ramped it up there, Gary, going for this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you've got to get this teaching. It's excellent for you to realize that God has freedom for you. You don't have to live under that curse anymore. That's right. You know, life has changed with knowledge, and that's what we're offering. You know, the Now Revolution 2.0 has been updated. That's current, it, the economic crisis in America, the things happening in our world. You have got to get this material, DVD, CD, Drenda. There's six hours of information revelation here that we learned over 20 some years that we're trying to condense into six hours and yes. there's no way we can actually get it in this program yes. so they have to get the material it's so good i want you to get it we're going to show you how to do it right now today's resources are designed to increase your faith and revolutionize your life through kingdom principles and help you fix your money thing are you tired of waiting for your life to change then it's time to change the way you think. It's time for revolution. You've got to step into the chaos and conflict if you ever want to change your life. The Now Revolution is the foundational teaching of entrepreneur and financial expert, Gary Cassie. In the Now Revolution 2.0, Gary's five teachings use scriptures, stories, humor, and personal experiences to show you the principles of the kingdom of God that will revolutionize your life now. When God gives you the plan, man, you need to move. Are you tired of being held captive by your finances? It's time to break free and discover God's abundant provision for your life. You need new direction. You need new ideas, new concepts, right? To get you someplace you've never been before. So it comes by revelation. Messages include, the kingdom of God is real. Why faith? Wealth by the Holy Spirit, power of the measure, and provision through God's kingdom. Call, write, or log on, and for only $30, you get over six hours of teaching on CD, 
plus 20 financial scripture cards designed to move you from just surviving to thriving. The kingdom works every single time. Or you can get the Now Revolution on five DVDs and the 20 financial scripture cards for only $40. Discover how to step from survival mode into destiny mode. How to sow and harvest, then live on the overflow. Start your journey to financial revolution. These great resources are yours when you support the worldwide outreach of Faith Life Ministries. $30 for the Now Revolution on CD with the financial scripture cards. $40 for the DVDs and scripture cards. And whether you order CDs or DVDs, Gary and Drenda want to bless you to be a blessing with a second set to give to a friend or loved one. Help someone you care about experience financial breakthrough and discover their God-given destiny. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Go to GaryCasey.com or write to Faith Life Now. P.O. Box 779, New Albany, Ohio, 43054. Get the Now Revolution 2.0 for you and a friend. Life's too short to spend one day living in lack. Gary Cassie is America's financial coach, and he makes fixing your money thing easy. Call, write, or log on today. More revolutionary teaching now on Fixing the Money Thing. One of my favorite stories that I saw a transformation in was a gentleman named Dan. He came to my office, had heard about us teaching on money. This is years ago. And his life was not doing well financially, although he was a Christian. And he was behind on his debts and he was behind on things. Came in the office. We sat down and talked. And I, I picked up a character. I felt that he was a man that had possibility, that he just needed some mentoring. And so I hired him into my company. We worked together for a while. And I noticed that he was disappointed. I mean, everything was, you know, he had lived through disappointment. I mean, he'd been through some hard times. And so he, he didn't have any zeal. His eyes didn't sparkle. He just, you know, he, was just, he just was surviving. And so our office, over some time, our office did really well. And our office won a trip to Hawaii. One of our vendors was going to pair a trip to Hawaii. And uh, Dan came in one day. We were talking about the trip. And he came in, and I saw the sparkle in his eye. And he came in and he said this, he says, do you know what Maui is? And of course, from Ohio, I said, yeah, it's warm. He goes, no, he says, do you know what Maui's known for? I said, no, he says, it's like the Marlin capital of the world, Hawaii is. He says, I've always wanted to catch a Marlin. So I turned to him, I said, Dan, listen to me. Do you know it's possible to know, to know that you'll go there and catch one? What? Well, how, how is that possible? He said, the word of God says in Mark 11, 24, therefore, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have it. And so I began to talk to him about the kingdom and how to get his wife and he in agreement. How do you release your faith? And began to coach him. And so finally he did. We, through a process of about a month, he and his wife came into agreement. Uh, I told him how to sow and believe God and, and hold on to that moment of a release of his faith and how to, how to have his heart set and not be moved by circumstances. And so we went out to Lahaina out there at Maui. Uh, the day that uh, two of our, three of us in our office went out there to, to fish that day. And we went up to the captain we're, and uh, we're saying, we're catching a blue marlin today. And you know, he, he, he's been doing that for 20 years. I mean, he's been taking tourists out fishing for 20 years. And he, he kind of just, you know, <laughs> you could see that little look in his eye like, okay, tourist, yeah, okay. He said, listen, you see that boat right there? Uh, that's my boat and this is my boat. Both boats have been out for four months. Every day for eight hours, we've caught one blue marlin. They're not here yet. This isn't the season for them, he said. We said, well, we're gonna catch one. So we went out and for six hours, we didn't catch anything. No my, my, no tuna, nothing. Nothing, nothing hit, nothing for six. And so I was up on top and I knew this was Dan's first test. And I was concerned that he would be growing impatient or even weary. And I yelled down to him. I said, Dan, here's the vital question. Dan, when did you receive the marlin? When we prayed or when it shows up? And he looked up at me and he says, when we prayed, Gary. I thought, that's the right answer. I knew his heart was still fixed on the word of God. And it was about two minutes after that, that the reel went, Bzzz! you know, and here, here comes, it stayed down deep. You know, the marlin's supposed to jump, right? And the captain said, that's not a blue marlin. They come to the surface. They splash. It didn't come up to the surface at all. So Dan's fighting this, his rod's bent, you know, and it, finally the clear water, he, the captain, 20 years, sees down into the water. Nope, I saw it. It's not a blue marlin. It's a striped marlin. It's not a blue marlin, he said. 
And we finally fight it up to the deck, get it up there, and it was a blue marlin. You know, you couldn't go to Dan's house after that without him asking this question. Hey, do you want to see the video again of me catching that marlin? <laughs> Dan's life changed after that. Checks began to rise. I saw his attitude changed. He just had to have a reason. He had to have a, an experience with the kingdom. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 1 tonight. Verse number 31. This is the sixth day of creation. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good, and there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Now, man had just been created over here in verse 26. Man was created at the end of the sixth day. Why would you think he was created at the end of the sixth day? So he could live in the seventh, the day of what? Rest. Why is it a day of rest? Because everything's finished. Okay, everything's complete. Verse number one in chapter two, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all of their vast array. By the seventh day, God had what? Finished the work he'd been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested. He, did, he wasn't tired. It meant he stopped because he's finished. Everything's there. Everything's complete. Man was created at the end of the process because he was destined to live with God on the seventh day with everything he had need of already there. He was never destined to live in worry and fear. He was destined to live in God in peace. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on, the, on that day he rested from all the work he'd been creating and had been done. Yeah, it's separated. It's, it's complete. It's holy. It's, it's rest. He, he calls it, I'm finished. All right? The Sabbath. Now, when Adam lost the Sabbath, Adam lost that place of rest. When he rebelled against God, he lost the provision of the kingdom of God. He was kicked out of the garden. He became a survivalist. He lost his assignment, his very purpose for life, and became a survivalist now hunting for provision by painful sweat and toil. So because Adam lost that picture of what God wanted for man, God gave man the Sabbath day. God gave man a picture called the Sabbath, and on that day they could not what? They could not work. They could not sweat. It was illegal. They, they were not allowed to work on the Sabbath day. So there's a place you can walk in life above the earth curse system and experience the Sabbath rest of God. These stories I'm telling you give you examples of that. Now, if you study the Old Testament, you know that they also had a Sabbath year. Who can tell me how often that was? Every what? Seventh day. You know, read the Bible. Everything's sevens. You know, march around the walls seven times. The walls come. See, God is always giving them a picture of the complete work that he did. Man doesn't have to live in that sixth day of always trying to get it done. God's always trying to show, you know, no, if you rest in me, you can rest. You know, I'll do it. All right, so the Sabbath year, what happened in the Sabbath year? Two things. There was every seven years. They could not sow crops. They could not sweat. They could not toil. And all debt was forgiven. Every Sabbath. Now why? Now that's the shadow. Now that's showing reality, right? So what's it showing me? It's showing me, again, Sabbath, completion, rest, everything I need. I don't have to live with. God's going to restore the fact that I don't have to live a life that's always in lack, having to be in debt. I don't have to bear the weight of, of the earth curse system and grinding it out, barely getting by out of the earth, that God's going to restore that someday. Now, the granddaddy picture that God gave us is the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee was the granddaddy year because in that year, it would happen one time in everyone's life. They'd see it one time. It gave them a picture of what Jesus was going to one day do, what God was going to ultimately restore back to mankind. And... Of course, the 49th year was the Sabbath year. You know, the year of Jubilee was the 50th year. So they couldn't plant crops in the 49th year. All debts were forgiven, right? The 50th year, the year of Jubilee went a, year, a little bit further. All land was given back. All original landowners got their land back. Now think about what's going on here. All the original, they were an agricultural society. If you had land, you had provision. When the land was given back to the original owners, you see, when they crossed the River Jordan, they were giving an inheritance of land. And for whatever reason, they may have lost it. But that inheritance of land ensured their provision. It ensured their well-being. They could raise livestock. They could raise agricultural items and food. And so he's saying, 
All land had to be restored. What Adam lost had been, was now giving back to us through what Jesus was going to do. In this picture called the year of Jubilee. All slaves were set free. See, slaves don't have an inheritance. Slaves don't have inheritance. All slaves are set free to go back to their mom and dad, you know, back to their family. Because we're set free from slavery. We have a father. We have an inheritance. Also, the land rested again. This is the second year in a row that it rested. And then they had to plant crops the next year, the 51st year. Three years they went without crops. And that would be pretty tough, wouldn't it? So God, they asked like you would ask. Let me, let me put it in our vernacular here or something. Pay your house off. And it's the same kind of, huh? Right? Same kind of, kind of take you back, take your breath away. Like, well, that's impossible. You know, how's that going to work? God answers that Leviticus chapter 25, verse number 20. Let's see what he says here. Leviticus chapter 25, verse number 20. You may ask, well, I bet you will. What will we eat in the seventh year if we don't plant or harvest our crops? God says, I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for three years while you plant and harvest. God is complete. On the sixth day, it was finished. Everything was, it was finished. Jesus said on the cross, it is what? Finished. It's complete. It's been, it's done. And so the sixth year, we call the double portion. Okay, the double portion. In other words, the only way they survive three years is to have a double portion in the sixth year. You right with me? Okay. Again, the 48th year is that sixth year, then 49th the Sabbath year, 50th year of Jubilee, then a year to plant the crops. And so you're three years out getting a crop. They're saying, how's that possible? God says in the sixth year or the 48th year in this example, he's gonna bless them so much they have more than enough and they're free from the concern of having to sow the crops. Because you're a believer, the covenant that you have, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no sorrow with it. The, the Hebrew word in the sorrow infers hard labor, hardship. You have been set free from that weight of having to spend your life as a slave, trying to find provision and survive as a survivalist. Today's resources are designed to increase your faith and revolutionize your life through kingdom principles and help you fix your money thing. Are you tired of waiting for your life to change? Then it's time to change the way you think. It's time for revolution. You've got to step into the chaos and conflict if you ever want to change your life. The Now Revolution is the foundational teaching of entrepreneur and financial expert, Gary Cassie. In the Now Revolution 2.0, Gary's five teachings use scriptures, stories, humor, and personal experiences to show you the principles of the kingdom of God that will revolutionize your life now. When God gives you the plan, man, you need to move. Are you tired of being held captive by your finances? It's time to break free and discover God's abundant provision for your life. You need new direction. You need new ideas, new concepts, right? to get you someplace you've never been before, so it comes by revelation. Messages include, the kingdom of God is real, why faith, wealth by the Holy Spirit, power of the measure, and provision through God's kingdom. Call, write, or log on, and for only $30, you get over six hours of teaching on CD, plus 20 financial scripture cards designed to move you from just surviving to thriving. The kingdom works every single time. Or you can get the Now Revolution on five DVDs and the 20 financial scripture cards for only $40. Discover how to step from survival mode into destiny mode. How to sow and harvest, then live on the overflow. Start your journey to financial revolution. These great resources are yours when you support the worldwide outreach of Faith Life Ministries. $30 for the Now Revolution on CD with the financial scripture cards. $40 for the DVDs and scripture cards. And whether you order CDs or DVDs, Gary and Drenda want to bless you to be a blessing with a second set to give to a friend or loved one. Help someone you care about experience financial breakthrough and discover their God-given destiny. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Go to GaryCasey.com or write to Faith Life Now, 
P.O. Box 779, New Albany, Ohio, 43054. Get the Now Revolution 2.0 for you and a friend. Life's too short to spend one day living in lack. Gary Cassie is America's financial coach, and he makes fixing your money thing easy. Call, write, or log on today. You need to get this material. I'm serious, you need to get it. It changed our lives. We were in a conference recently. A woman came up to us so excited. She was uh, just without money. I mean, out work, sick. Almost uh, homeless. Almost homeless. One yeah. paycheck away from being homeless. And not only did she, her life change, she paid off $48,000 worth of debt, yes. now has a business, a house. In less than 12 months, her life was completely changed based on the kingdom. Here's the, th here's the deal. Once you see the kingdom work one time, it works every single every time, time. Yes. because the kingdom operates by law. That's why you need to take the time to learn how the kingdom operates. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and his, its righteousness and all of these things shall be added, meaning learn mm -hmm. how it works. That's right. You know, that's what we're here for at Faith Life Now. We want to help you to get a hold of God's kingdom principles. Yes, we his word works. It works for anyone. God is no respecter of persons. He wants you free from the earth curse system and living under his system, his domain, his lordship. And today I want to pray with you concerning getting free from that earth curse and breaking that off of you. Father, in the name yes, of Jesus, Father. I just thank you for my friend. I thank yes, you that, thank you. Jesus, you came to set them free from the earth curse system. Now, Father, yes, right now we Jesus. break the power and the hold of this system against their life. We break the curse off of their life in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we thank you, Father, they're released to do what you've called them to do today, to be free, yes. to walk in freedom, the freedom that Christ set them free for. And we give you praise for that today, that they're free in you. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. We thank you for tuning in today, and I hope you'll get the series. It's going to change your life. Fixing the Money Thing is brought to you by the Ford Financial Group and Lindsay Honda and Acura of Columbus. Tune in each Friday at 5.30 p.m. for Drenda. Connect with special guests, discover life-changing topics, and learn to live life out loud. It's more than just television. It's Drenda. Want to know more? Read and comment on Gary's blog. Partner with Faith Life Now. Send us your prayer requests. Order more life-changing resources. All these things and more are waiting for you at GaryCasey.com. Come experience Faith Life Church for yourself and become part of a close-knit gathering of people who want something more, more impact, more purpose, more of God, more of life. Located on the east side of Columbus, just 10 minutes from Easton off of 161, Faith Life Church meets in the Now Center with services Saturdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. Come experience the good life at Faith Life Church. Thank you for your faithful prayers and generous support of this worldwide ministry. To invite Gary to speak in your service or event, contact him at GaryCasey.com. Fixing the Money Thing is a presentation of Faith Life Now.